안녕하세요. RSJ입니다. 오늘은 제목에 쓰여 있다시피 어린스 헤밍웨이의 The Old Man and the Sea 노인과 바다를 읽어볼 텐데요. 영어 원문으로 읽는 거라 제가 발음이라든지 스킵하고 건너뛰고 <웃음> 읽는다든지 약간 실수가 있을 수 있어요. 그렇지만 그냥 영어 소리가 들리나 보다 라고 생각해 주시고 편안하게 감상해 주시면 될것 같습니다. 연습을 했는데 막상 나서 녹음을 하려니까 여가 굳은 것 같고 긴장도 되고 그러면 낭독해 보도록 하겠습니다. He was an old man who fished alone in a skiff in the Gulf Stream, and he has gone eighty four days now. Without taking a fish. In the first four days, a boy had been with him. But after four days without a fish, the boy's parents had told him that the old man was now definitely and finally Zalao, which is the word for m a b u n l u c k y and the boy had gone. At their orders in another boat, which caught three good fish the first week. In May, the boy sat to see the old man come in each day with his skiff empty, and he always went down to help him carry either the coil lines, or the gaff, a n a p p o o n and the sail that was f u r r e d around the mast. The sail was patched with a flower set, and f u r t it looked like the flag of permanent defeat. The old man was thin and gaunt, with deep wrinkles in the back of his neck. The brown blotches of the b e n e v o l e n t skin cancer the sun brings from its reflection in the tropic sea were on his cheeks. The b l o o d just ran well down the side of his face, and he hands had deep creased scars from handling heavy fish in the cold. But none of these scars were fresh. They were as old as eruptions in a fl- in a fishless desert. Everything about him was old. Except his eyes, and they were the same color as the sea, and were cheerful and undefeated. Undefeated. The boy said to him, as they climbed the bank from where the skiff was holded up, "I could g i r l with you again. We made some money." The old man had taught the boy to fish, and the boy loved him. No, the old man said. You are with a lucky boat. Stay with them. But remember how you went eighty-seven days without fish, and then we caught the big ones every day for three weeks. I remember, the old man said. I know you did not leave me because you doubted. It was Papa made me leave. I am a boy, and I must obey him. I know, the old man said. It's quite normal. He has much faith. No, the old man said. But we have, haven't we? Yes, t 
the boy said. Can I offer you a beer on the terrace? And then we'll take the stuff home. Why not? The old man said. Between fishermen. They sat on the terrace. And many of the fishermen made fun of the old man. And he was not angry. Others of the older fishermen looked at him and well said. But they did not show it and they spoke politely about the current and the depths. They had drifted their lines and lined at <laughs> and the steady good weather and of what they had seen. The successful fishermen of that day were already in and had butchered their marlino and carried them like the full length across two planks with two men staggering at the end of each plank to the fish house where they waited for the ice truck to carry them market in Havana. Those who had caught the sharks had to take them to the shark factory on the other side of the cove where they were hosted on a block and tackle, their ribs removed, their fins cut off and their high skins out and their flesh cut into strips of When the wind was in the east, a smoke came across the harbor from the shark factory. But today there was only one the faint edge of the other because the wind has packed into north and then dropped it off and it was present and sunny on the terrace. Santiago, the boy said. Yes, the old man said. He was holding his glass and thinking of many years ago. Can I go out to get sardines for your fall tomorrow? No. Go and play baseball. I guess the row and Rogelio will throw the net. I would like to go. If I cannot fish with you, I would like to serve in some way. You bow me a beer, the old man said. You are already a man. How old was I when you first took me in a boat? Five and you nearly were killed when I brought the fish in. Too green, and he nearly told the boat to pieces. Can you remember? I can remember the tail slapping and banging, the door breaking, and the noise of the clubbing. I can remember you throwing me into the boat where the wet coiled lines were and feeling the whole boat shiver noise of you clubbing him like chopping a tree down and the sweet blood smell all over me all over me can you really can you really remember that or did I just tell it to you I remember everything from when we first went together the old man looked at him with his sunburned, confident, loving eyes. If you were my boy, I'd take you out and gamble, he said. But you are your father's and your mother's and you are in a lucky boat. May I get the sardines? I know where I can get four baits too. I have mine left from today. 
I put them in the salt in the box. Let me get four fresh ones. One, the old man said. His hope and his confidence had never gone, but now they were freshening as when the bridge rises. Two, the boy said. Two, the old man agreed. You didn't steal them. I would, the boy said. But I bought these. Thank you, the old man said. He was too simple to wonder when he had attained humility. But he knew he had attained it. And he knew it was not disgraceful. And he cared no loss of true pride. Tomorrow is going to be a good day with this current, he said. Where are you going? the boy asked. Far out to come in when the wind shifts. I want to be out before it is light. I'll try to get him to work far out, the boy said. Then, if you hook something truly big, we can come to your aid. He does not like to work too far out. No, the boy said. But I will see something that he cannot see, such as a bird working, and get him to come out after the pain. Dolphin. Are his eyes the bed? He is almost blind. It is strange, the old man said. He never went toggling. That is what killed the eyes. But you went toggling for years off the mosquito coast and you are, your eyes are good. I am strange, old man. But are you strong enough now for a truly big fish? I think so. And there are many tricks. Let us take the stuff home, the boy said. So I can get the cast net and go after sardines. They pick up the gear from the boat. The old man carried the mast on his shoulder. The boy carried the wooden boat with the coiled, hard braided brown lines, the gaff and the harpoon with his shaft. The box with the bait was under the stern of the skiff along with the club that was used to subdue the big fish when they were brought alongside. No one would steal from the old man, but it was better to take the sail and heavy lines on, as the dew was bad for them. And thought he was quite sure no local people would steal from him. The old man thought that the gaff and a harpoon were needless temptations to live in a boat. They walked up the road together to the old man's shacks and when it drew its open door. The old man leaned the mast with his wrapped sail against the wall and the boy put the box and the other gear beside it. The mast was nearly as long as the one room of the shack. The shack was made of tough bushes of the royal palm, which are called guano, and in it there was a bed, a table, a chair, and a place on the dirt floor to cook with chocolate. 
on the brown walls of the plantains, overlapping leaves of the sturdy fibered guano. There was a picture in color of the sacred art of Jesus, and another of the Virgin of Corp. Once there had been a tinted photograph of his wife on the wall, but he had taken it down because it made him too lonely to see it, and it was on the shelf. In the corner under his clean shirt. What do you have to eat? The boy asked. A pot of yellow rice with fish. Do you want some? No, I will eat at home. Do you want me to make the fire? No, I'll make it later on. Or I may eat the rice cold. May I take the gas net? Of course. There was no gas net, and the boy remembered when they had sold it. There was no gas net, and the boy remembered when they had sold it. But they went through this fiction every day. There was no pot of yellow rice and fish, and the boy knew this too. Eighty-five is a lucky number, the old man said. How would you like to see me bring one? And that dressed out of her thousand pounds. I'll get the casnet and go for Zeldin's. Will you sit in the sun in the doorway? Yes, I have yesterday's paper, and I will read the baseball. The boy did not know whether yesterday's paper was in a fiction too, but the old man brought it out from under the bed. Perico gave it to me at the. He explained, "I will be back when I have the sardines. I will keep yours and mine together on ice, and we can share them in the morning. When I come back, you can tell me about the baseball. The young kid cannot lose, but I fear." The Indians of Cleveland have faith in the Yankees, my son. Think of the great DiMaggio. I fear both the Tigers of Detroit and Indians of Cleveland. Be careful, or you will fear even the Reds, if the Reds of Cincinnati and the White Sox of Chicago. You study it, and tell me when I come back. Do you think we should buy a terminal lottery with an A5? Tomorrow is the eighty-fifth day. We can do that, the boy said. But, but, what about the eighty-seven of your great record? It could not happen twice. Do you think you can find it? Eighty-five. I can order one. One shit. That's two dollars and a half. How can we borrow it from? That's easy. I can always borrow two dollars and a half. I think perhaps I can too, but I try not to borrow. First you borrow, then you beg. Keep warm, old man," the boy said. "Remember, we are in September." The 
months when the great fish come, the old man said. Anyone can be a fisherman in May. I go now for the sardines, the boy said. When the boy came back, the old man was asleep and chair and the sun was down. The boy took the old army blanket off the bed and spread it over the back of the chair and over the old man's shoulders. They were strange shoulders, still powerful, although very old. And the neck was still strong to see the creases did not show so much when the old man was asleep and he had fallen forward. His shirt had been patched so many times that it was like the sail and the patches were faded to many different shades by the sun. The old man's head was very old though and with his eyes closed where was no life in his face. The newspaper lay across his knees and the weight of his arm held it during the evening bridge. He was barefooted. The boy left him there and when he came back, the old man was still asleep. Wake up, old man, the boy said, and put his hands on one of the old man's knees. The old man opened his eyes, and for a moment he was coming back from a long way away. Then he smiled. What have you got? he asked. Supper? said the boy. We are going to have supper. I'm not hungry. Come on and eat. You can fish and not eat. I have. The old man said getting up and taking the newspaper and folding it. Then he started to fold the blanket. Keep the blanket around you, the boy said. We'll not fish without eating while I'm alive. Then live a long time and take care of yourself, the old man said. What are we eating? Black beans and rice, fried bananas and some stew. The boy had brought them in a two-decker metal container from the terrace. The two sets of knives and forks and spoons were in his pocket, with a paper napkin wrapped it around the edge of that. Who gave this to you? Martin. The owner. I must thank him. I thanked him already, the boy said. You don't need to thank him. I will give him the belly made of a big fish, the old man said. Has he done this for us more than once? I think so. I must give him something more than the belly meat then. He is very thoughtful for us. He sent two beers. I like the beer in Ken's best. I know, but this is in bottles. How the beer, and I take back the bottles. That's very kind of you, the old man said. Should we eat? I've been asking you to, the boy told him gently. I have not wished to off the container until you were ready. I'm ready now, the old man said. I only needed time to wash. Where did you wash? 
festival we felt. The village water supply was two streets down the road. I must have water here for him, the boy thought, and sob, and a good towel. Why am I so thoughtless? I must get him another shirt and a jacket for the winter and some sort of sheets in another blanket. Your stew is excellent, the old man said. Tell me about the baseball, the boy asked him. In the American League, as the Yankees as I said, the old man said happily. They lost today, the boy told him. That means nothing. The great DiMaggio is himself again. They have other men on the team. Naturally, but he makes the difference in the other league between Brooklyn and Philadelphia. I must take Brooklyn. But then I think of Dick Sisler and those great drives in the old park. There was nothing ever like them. He hits the longest ball I ever seen. Do you remember when he used to come to the terrace? I wanted to take him fishing, but I was too timid to ask it. Then I asked you to ask him, and you were too timid. I know, it was a great mistake. He might have gone with us. Then we would have all of our lives. I would like to take the great DiMaggio fishing, the old man said. They say his father was a fisherman.